Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be integrating a trigonometric function. We have dx over 1 minus sine x and we're going to integrate it. We've done a similar problem before. If you remember recently, we had a differential equation. You can go ahead and check that out as well. So I'll be presenting three methods. Let's start with the first one. So we have 1 over 1 minus sine x. We're going to go ahead and use a very special substitution for this. So let's go ahead and replace tangent x over 2 with z. It's a very special type of substitution from here because tangent x over 2 is equal to z. By using the double angle formula, we can safely say that tangent x equals 2z, or not 2z, divided by 1 minus z squared. So basically we replace z with tangent x over 2 and that's the double angle formula. We've got to find a couple other things, such as what is dx, right? So let's go ahead and try to isolate x from here. If you do arc tangent on both sides, you get x over 2 equals arc tan or inverse tan z. And then multiply both sides by 2, and you get x equals 2 times arc tangent of z. And dx from here becomes, you got to differentiate arc tangent z, which is 1 over 1 plus z squared. And then just multiply by dz, so it becomes 2dz over 1 plus z squared. So that's dx, that's tangent x, but we do have sine x in our equation. So we need to find that. How do you find sine x? Well, if you know tangent x, you can draw a right triangle. Let's go ahead and do that. So this is our right triangle, and this would be considered angle x. And we know that tangent x is 2z over 1 minus z squared. If you use the Pythagorean theorem, you're going to find 1 plus z squared for the hypotenuse. And the sine x from here is just going to be 2z over 1 plus z squared. Nice. We got sine x. Let's go ahead and substitute everything so that dx over 1 minus sine x turns into the following. dx will be replaced with 2dz over 1 plus z squared. And the sine x will be replaced with 2z over 1 plus z squared. So notice that the sine x and dz, dx are very similar, right? So now we're going to go ahead and integrate it. We have dz. 1 plus z squared cancels out. But let's go ahead and make a common denominator first. That's going to give us 2dz over 1 plus z squared. And then this one is just going to be 1 plus z squared minus 2z over that, but we're going to flip and multiply. So the 1 plus z squared is going to be in the numerator, and 1 plus z squared minus 2z will be in the denominator. And we're supposed to integrate this, right? Now, notice what this becomes. We can go ahead and cancel these out, and then we can definitely take the 2 out, but dz over, notice that this expression is z minus 1 quantity squared. So we're basically getting from here 2 times dz over z minus 1 squared. Now what does that equal, right? That would be a good question. Well, here's the thing. If you have dz over z squared, its integral is going to be negative 1 over z plus c. Why? Because if you integrate, I mean, if you differentiate 1 over z, you get negative 1 over z squared. Of course, I'm talking about differentiating with respect to z. That's why we have dz here. Makes sense? So this should be the same thing with the minus sign. So it's going to be like negative 2 over z minus 1 and then plus c. That's it, right? But what is z? z is tangent x over 2. So now you can go ahead and replace z with tangent x over 2 minus 1 plus c. And that will be the answer. But obviously, you can kind of work this out. Write it as sine over cosine. Make a common denominator. Use some identities so on and so forth. But I'm going to leave it at that because when we do the other methods, we're going to be getting different things and hopefully you can compare them uh, at the end. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at the second method. So we're trying to integrate dx over 1 minus sine x. And for this one, for the second method, I'm going to use the half angle, double angle formula, whichever you want to call that. So that formula goes as follows. Remember, cosine 2 alpha has two, three formulas, uh, one of which is cosine squared minus sine squared. And then by using the Pythagorean identities, you can get two more formulas. 
then one of them, the one that I'm going to use, involves 1 minus 2 sine squared alpha. Why am I picking something with 1? Because we're going to subtract it from 1, so the 1s are going to cancel out. Make sense? So in this case, sine x, by the way, uh, we can't use that formula. I just realized I was thinking about cosine. So one thing we can do is we can turn this into cosine of pi over 2 minus x. And then we can go ahead and use this double angle formula, right? Because that's just sine x. Oh, another thing that I can do is probably replace 1 with sine squared x over 2 plus cosine squared x over 2. And replace the sine x with 2 sine x over 2 cosine x over 2. And then this becomes the following. So we're going to give up on this and just change the method a little bit. So what I'm trying to do here is basically use the identity for this one. So the denominator is just going to be sine x over 2 minus cosine x over 2 squared. Now where do we go from here? That's again going to be a different story. But like I said earlier, with the second method, we can definitely turn this into cosine of pi over 2 minus x and then use the double angle formula on the cosine. But notice that we're supposed to use the sine squared version of that formula. Anyways, let's leave this as is and hopefully you guys can shed more light and talk about the third method because the third method is actually really nice. Okay, so here's how the third method works. We have dx over 1 minus sine x. We're going to go ahead and multiply this by the conjugate, which is 1 plus sine x. So whenever you have 1 plus minus sine x, you should always multiply by conjugates because that gives you a difference of two squares, which is good. So this gives us the following. 1 plus sine x divided by 1 minus sine squared x and then the x. Now notice that because sine squared plus cosine squared is 1, 1 minus sine squared is the same thing as cosine squared x. Now what does this give us? Let's go ahead and replace that with cosine squared. And then what we're going to do is we're actually going to split this into two fractions that are being added. And for the sine over cosine squared, I want to do something special. Uh, separate that into uh, a product. So this one I want to turn into secant squared. And this one I want to write as sine over cosine times 1 over cosine. Now what is good about that? is that sine over cosine is tangent. So this becomes tangent times secant. Hopefully you recognize that because that's one of the formulas that you kind of need to memorize when you learn calculus. Derivatives and integrals go hand in hand. But this is the derivative of secant. This is the derivative of tangent. You knew that, right? So this becomes tangent x plus secant x plus c. Now, how is that related to the first solution that we found, that's for you to find out. But this brings us to the end of the video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.